You're listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Welcome back to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. We're broadcasting from the Natural Green Lawn and Landscape Studios, and we're brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency, and by Extreme Exteriors. You can count on Extreme Exteriors for expert installation of siding, roofing, soffits, fascia, decks, windows, and more. With their knowledge and experience, they can design the perfect solution to make your home beautiful and energy efficient, saving you maintenance and money for years to come. Call Extreme Exteriors at 763-441-1334 and tell them Gene and Tony sent you. It's time now to hear from the Community Associations Institute. The CAI Minute is brought to you by New Concepts Rental Management. Whether you're an accidental landlord or a seasoned investor, New Concepts Rental Management can help you achieve your financial goals. New Concepts Rental Management can advise and guide you through every aspect of the business. Give me a call, Tony Crockett, at New Concepts Rental Management, 952-922-2500. Are you a member of the Community Associations Institute? For nearly 40 years, CAI has provided education and resources to volunteer homeowners who govern community associations and the professionals who support them. Visit CAIonline.org to learn more. The address again is CAIonline.org. CAI helps community associations board members by providing online resources, in-person training, and hard copy publications written by association management experts. CAI offers community managers professional development, networking opportunities, and and a certification program that is established as the industry standard nationwide. Minnesota has its own chapter of the Community Associations Institute to bring resources and tools from community associations around the country right to your home. Visit www.cai-mn.com to learn more and become a member of CAI today. Your community and management company will benefit from your involvement. Join the Community Associations Institute today at cai-mn.com and click on Membership. We'd like to invite our listeners to let us know what's what's on your mind. Give us a call on our hotline, 952-224-2668, and tell us what you think about our program. Tell us if you have questions, what you think about our topics. Uh, do you agree with us, disagree with us? Let us know, 952-224-2668. Well, we're talking about uh, this uh, story out of uh, Ohio uh, where homeowner associations going through the process of certification for FHA financing. And now it appears that the Ohio Civil Rights Commission has filed a suit against a specific association for failing to even try to obtain FHA certification. And they say that uh, they're doing so is based on a claim of discrimination. Because not having FHA approval means people uh, of lesser means, in this case, a single mom with a child, cannot get an FHA loan to purchase there. Tell Gene, tell us a little bit, talk a little bit about why an association would choose not to certify with FHA. Well, yeah, there, there are so many uh, reasons why. There are guidelines, of course, that FHA puts in place. And so, for example, um, an association, I can see this very clearly. Let's say a few years ago, an association uh, uh, gets established. The developer is hoping to get in and out after one, two years, which has always been. Sell all the homes and be done. That's been the process. But, however, the real estate uh, uh, market uh, dropped, and so now the developer couldn't sell. And so you are left with uh, a decision here. Do, do you uh, leave? Uh, does the developer just walk away? And now uh, homeowners uh, in uh, 80% of the units that are uh, owned and occupied now have to be responsible for an additional 20% that was supposed to be paid for by other people living in they haven't sold in so those they're units? empty and they're not paying dues that's right so an association may say you know what we want to work together with the developer and we will allow them to rent out their units but to make that decision uh, would negate you being able to uh, be certified under FHA because FHA says uh, one of the guidelines, no one entity can own more than ten percent of the property. Of the property. Well, here, so, so here's some legitimate business decisions to save and and support the community that might 
uh, eliminates you from FHA certification. Yeah, so here you have a clear case of the uh, association saying, you know what, we're going to uh, not even try with certification. We're going to allow this to take place so that uh, there's less of a hardship on all of, all the, of our members. All of our this members. This will help us survive. That is a wise decision. Yeah. But now uh, to not try, uh, it's going to be considered it discrimination. Might be discri- considered discrimination. Okay, yeah. what about an association that's already well established and that decides they don't want to go through the certification process? What might the reasons be? Well, that? there are others. Uh, there's generally a cost that's involved. Now, I, it is true that a person can go through uh, the government directly, uh, sort of a DIY, do it yourself, mm-hmm. and uh, go through that process. But one of the reasons why a lot of our clients turn to us and ask us to do that process uh-huh. or ask other professionals is because it's long, it's arduous, things come back uh, from uh, the government saying uh, not approved and you don't know why, and then you've got to be- Is this HUD? Are you put it, running the certification through HUD? Yes. Okay. All right. So that's I want to I want to make that clear yeah. that that's the agency you're dealing with. And so and so here they're going through the process and then they just come back and say not approved, but they don't tell you why they don't tell you what needs. They won't tell you what you need to do to no, get and approved. So, so yes, it's long. It's arduous. It costs. And so because and of many, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it many costs associations, money. Associations right are paying their management company or an attorney to do this for them. So, so in the past they could opt not to do this. Yes. And and you know there are some down there is a downside to not doing it and that is you have you have shrunk the pool of uh, potential buyers for your community. I mean there you mm-hmm. do have to weigh some of these things. If you the more uh, the market can can do to get yeah. financing to buy in your in your community the better off you how are. How about and how about for this reason? How about if the people who live in a community say, "You know what? Someone who comes in with FHA financing, that's someone who comes in with very little down. That's why right. it's been, uh, that's why it's been. That's why it's a, that's the whole purpose of the government program. Right. FHA program. So yeah. with, for three, three and a half percent down, yeah. they can buy the home. And what if the other association members say, you know what? Those people coming in like that don't have much skin in the game. We mm-hmm. want people who have gone through conventional mm-hmm. because they're going to have to come down with, 10 to 20 percent and because of that they uh, have more invested more yeah. invested and we're going to see a less likelihood of homes uh, going into foreclosure so now, now so now this this the Ohio Civil Rights Commission is filing this suit because they're saying the very the very fact that this association chose not to get FHA financing even for very good re- or FHA certification even if it had very good reasons, we think discriminates against a certain segment of the market based yes. on family. That's interesting. Based on families with children. Yes. They think it particularly discriminates against family with children. I, I'm not sure how they're going to or, make or, that. Uh, or the other one would be uh, based on public assistance. You can't discriminate based on... Mm, right. What uh, public what? assistance? <laughs> Not FHA, not the FHA. But I was comparing this to mm-hmm. section the Section yeah. 8 voucher program. The Section 8 voucher program for rental has always been vo- a voluntary program. A landlord could choose to participate or not. A couple of times in my, during my career, someone has, has filed the lawsuit and said that's discriminatory. Fair Housing Act says you cannot discriminate against people who on public assistance. So why do landlords get to turn down people with a Section 8 voucher? Twice that I know of, this has gone to the Minnesota Supreme Court, and twice the Minnesota Supreme Court has said, it is a voluntary program, period. The landlord does not have to accept the Section 8 voucher. And the reasoning behind it is the Section 8 voucher program requires the landlord to sign an extra contract with the housing authority that has more, <laughs> more provisions and more restrictions yeah. on it than the state of Minnesota requires. And it requires an additional inspection every year by the Section 8 uh provider. Yeah. So it's more cost to the landlord, it's more trouble to the landlord. So they say this voucher, this 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 renter can take this voucher anywhere that will accept yes. it. But le- Mr. Landlord, you don't have yeah. to accept it. I see that analogous. That's very analogous. I think it's analogous to this program. Very much so. When landlords aren't discriminating against someone 
because of their family status, they're dis- they're discriminating because they don't want to go to the extra expense and trouble of going through this government yeah. program. And, and the part that bothers me, lastly here too, uh, on, on this is that uh, because of the way things are set up with uh, HUD when it comes to areas of discrimination, we are in such a hypersensitive mode now. We are now guilty until proven innocent. There is a preponderance of evidence that you have to prove that that uh, you are this claim. And because here's here's what happens: someone makes someone makes the claim. Someone from the regulatory agency uh, in uh, with uh, HUD and Fair Housing says, "Well, uh, we don't know." Uh, if uh, anything uh, took place we or not, we got this complaint. We don't know if it's true or not. Yeah, and and so it uh, they can they have it continue on because they want to show and prove their their value and worth as an agency. Mm-hmm. And so now all of a sudden, someone has to defend themselves, and so then they turn to insurance, and then that means that when insurance gets involved, insurance says, you know what, instead of uh, actually going to court and, with this. And arguing this point and getting a decisive answer yep. to this point. We're going to uh, just uh, we're pay going everybody to pay, off. Pay, pay people <laughs> off because it's going to be cheaper. Oh. And we move forward so you'd never get a precedent case set. Yeah. yeah. You never, uh, you, the courts never get a chance to actually address To really deal the with question. this. And so that's yeah. part of the issue. But anyway, a, a very interesting thing, something that we're going to have to watch a lot further in the news as it uh, continues on in the state of Ohio. Well, we need to take a break. We're going to do so right now. Don't go away. A lot more of Where You Live with Gene and Tony after these messages.